Shalom to y'all, most high Christ. Bless what we got here. We got questions. I'm going to go through some questions, and then who knows? Who knows where I might go from there? Who does know? I don't. Let's go with this first question. You want to read it, sir? You're such a great reader. Ananias is the best reader in Israel, if y'all didn't know. Watch these skills. No pressure. <laughs> if, if I stumble, it's because of the writing. Oh, okay. Your writing sucks. It ain't his fault. Tips on how to be in a house married to a spouse that's not in the truth. Tips on how to be in the house. We need some tips. With a tip. Give you a tip on how to do that. All right. Tip one. Pack a bag. Tip two. <laughs> nah, we're going to go to the scripture. Oh. Let's go to the scripture. Where do we want to go? Where do you want to go in the night? What's in your, what, where would you go? I mean, I got a few in my head, but I don't want to. It all depends. Yeah, I know. This is a very dependent question. See, it all depends on how long you've been in the house with the un with the unmarried, with, with the, the um unrepentant yes. spouse. Let's get the scripture. Uh hold on. I got you. Go ahead. Keep keep going. Hold on. Sirach 27 verse 12. Sirach 27 verse 12. See that? that's a DJ voice. Who read? It's the book of Sirach, chapter 27 and verse 12. Yeah. If thou be among the indiscreet. If you among those that don't want to repent, go ahead. Observe the time. Pay attention to the time. How long you been in that situation? How long have you been there? That is the deeper question. Now, go ahead. What were you, what were you going to say something else? Come on, man. Oh, man. Read that scripture again. Sirach chapter 27 and verse 12. Yep. If thou be among the indiscreet, yep. observe the time. Yep. But be continually among men of understanding. So it's a line you got to draw. It's a line you got to draw as, what does it, it say, a tip on how to be in a house married to a spouse that's not in the truth. Because them not being in the truth means what? You living a lie. That's what it comes down to. You are living a lie. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. They ain't expected to go like this. They thought I was going to hear something nice. Nope. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3, verse 1. The book of the Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 and verse 1. Yeah. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, uh -huh. and there shall no torment touch them. Mm -hmm. In the sight of the unwise. In the sight of your spouse that's in the house with you. They seem to die. They think you are living a miserable life. They think you're dead. Go ahead. And their departure is taken for misery. Uh-huh. And they're going from us to be utter destruction, but they are in peace. But we in peace. See, they think you are in utter destruction. Now, again, the line, like we was reading in Sirach 27, where say, observe the time. What's that line look like? I can tell you from previous experiences, I think a year is enough. A year is enough because what's going to end up happening if you don't get away from them, they're going to end up pulling you out. And I've seen this movie, this story, over and over and over again. And then how you saying, how, then they'll be saying crazy stuff to you for why they not here no more. They'll make it like you said something to them, for like they offended, like you offended them in some way for why they don't want to come back or why they want to stay with the Christian that's in their house or the Muslim or whatever it is, the, the Negro that just want to sit at home and watch college football, whatever it might be. I don't know what his God is. His God might be the Greekest fashions or her God might be going to the mall, going shopping. I don't know. Let's read on. Verse four, mm -hmm. for though they be punished in the sight of men, uh -huh. yet is their hope full of immortality. Yep. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For God proved them uh -huh. and found them worthy for himself. Yep. As gold in the furnace hath he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. So if you expect to shine when the Lord's come, that means you got to make strong and hard decisions. If you ain't willing to make that decision, like, look, I, you know, my wife ain't here, but she'll tell you she don't even have to think about it. If she wasn't keeping the commandments, what would be next? She don't even have to think about it because she already know. Don't even put me in that position. Don't even, don't even put yourself on that train track because you're not going to win versus the Bible. And you got to get that strong mindset 
right there. You got something out of nine? Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Because you are the mighty counselor. So <clears throat> I'm just assuming you've been with us because there's not too many people out here that's been with us less than a year. So, yeah. you know, yeah. close to it. If you've been with us over a year. Then go to Sirach 25 and 1. Is the book of Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 1. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. So it says the, the unity of brethren. Okay, that's one. The love of neighbors, loving your neighbor as yourself. And a wife that agree. What it says? And a wife. A man that, and a wife. A man. Sorry, thank you. A man and a wife that agree together. So if you got one wife that still wants to celebrate Christmas, Thanksgiving, birthdays, well, you don't and everything have two else, wives well, now. We well, you have one. a wife. Oh, okay, see. there you a go. A wife. That's a whole nother discussion. Let me help you out. <laughs> <laughs> that has uh, that is still in this. You guys obviously you're not agreed, right? So go to Jeremiah um, two and thirty three. Because if you've been with her that long, obviously you're not really leaning on her to change her ways. Or him. Or him. Or him. Or him. It might I, be I know him. I keep going the wrong Some way. sisters be wanting to stay with these brothers. They comfortable. Right. They comfortable. He pay all the bills. If I leave, what about my bills? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Figure it out. You got that, Jeremiah? Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 33. Yeah. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou... Also taught the wicked ones thy ways. So what are you doing? You're trimming your ways, and you're supposed to be an Israelite trying to show, shine your light amongst men. But then they say, okay, but your wife or your husband is still doing all these other worldly things. It's, I still see them going to the Christmas party and whatever. So what you're doing, you're, you're trimming your ways, and the ways are the ways of keeping the commandments to seek love of that other person. Yep. You can't do that. Can't do that. Go to this one. Go to uh, 2 Maccabees chapter 7 for my sisters out there that's dealing with these bum brothers. This dude can't love you, all right? If you a sister and you're dealing with this dude, this dude, it's impossible for him to love you if he's not keeping the commandments. I'm just telling you the truth. Whatever you think that love is, is, is not. It's not truly love. You haven't known love because you haven't known a man that's keeping the commandments and loving you. And some of you brothers out there that's not taking care of your wife's man, not doing things like, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what your wife needs, right? My wife likes flowers. You know what I'm saying? She likes to go on date night. She likes, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So if you're not doing those things with your wife, man, what's the point of you being repentant? What's the point? Because you're really making the truth look bad if you're not even really taking care of your wife. She's like, I could go be with this dude that's going to really romance me. But I'm with this dude in the truth, and he don't even love me. He don't even take care of me. He's not giving me no quality time. Go ahead. You finna say something tonight? I would say, how can you be a repentant Israelite? You're not a repentant Israelite because part of that is taking care of your wife. Right, you know? right. I'm going to do a class on that, man. My daddy told me that a long time ago. He said, a woman is like a car. If you don't take care of her, she'll quit working. Yep. You know what I'm saying? She'll quit working, I'll take care of her. Let's go to this. 2 Maccabees chapter 7, verse 20. For Se my sisters out there, go ahead. 2 Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 20. Yeah. But the mother was marvelous above all yeah. and worthy of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, she bare it with a good courage uh -huh. because of the hope that she had the hope that she had in the Lord. Because of the hope that she had in the Lord, this woman was okay losing her seven sons. You gotta be okay losing that whack ass husband. I don't know no nice way to say it. The dude that ain't keeping the commandments. You gotta be okay losing that. Cause really, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, as quiet as it might be kept, he doing so he look, I, let me say this, man. How do I say it? He, huh? Yeah, he playing, but I mean, oh, say it plain. I'm going to say nine times out of ten, if the Negro is not keeping the commandments, he's going he's gonna to be doing something to jeopardize that marriage. And you making uh, exceptions for it. You know what I'm saying? He might be, I don't know, watching pornography. 
He might be talking to some chicks on the side on Facebook, DMing chicks. I don't know. But he ain't keeping the commandments, so it's nothing to keep him in straight. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, Azariah. Let's get Mark 3, and uh, we'll start at uh, 23. Yeah. It's the book of Mark, chapter 3, and verse 23. And he called them unto him and said unto them in parables, how can Satan cast out Satan? So he asked a question. He said, how can Satan cast out Satan? Hmm. Read. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. So if a kingdom is, is divided, they're going back and forth, that, 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 that thing's not going to stand. Read. And if a house be divided against itself, mm -hmm. that house cannot stand. So if that house is divided, that house cannot stand. Yep. Two things are going to happen. Either he's going to get on board or you're going to fall out the truth. Yep. Right? Read. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but so, hath an end. So up to this point, you've been 100% complicit in this thing. Yep. You're comfortable in your sin. Yep. You're comfortable in that thing. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Make a decision. Yep. And what happens is, again, what happens is you come into the truth, you strong, right? But like like the, the sea brushing up against the coastline, it slowly erodes you, right? You might not be gone tomorrow. You might not be gone next week, but it's going to slowly pull you out. That's what's going to happen. You're going to look back and be like, dang, what happened? I don't even know. Now I'm over here eating turkey and dressing again all of a sudden. You ain't going to know how you got there. Watch this. Watch this. You got some? Go ahead, Anna. No, go ahead. I ain't going to forget. Go ahead, sir. All right, so say that uh, you're new in this truth. Yeah. Um, and, and what usually happens when a brother, usually a brother, comes mm -hmm. in the truth, they're on fire, right? Yep. So they're going to go home, and I'm going to tell you this. You can't feed a baby with a fork. Mm. If you try to beat a, feed a baby with a fork, you're going to be poking the baby all in the face, right? You got to feed the baby with a spoon. You got to bring them, come in, you know, a little lightly, and let, but still not trimming your ways. Go to uh, 1 Timothy uh, verse 4. We're going to start at 12. Can't feed a baby with a fork. Can't beat a baby. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to put that in the book, Put man. that in the book. I'm putting that on a T-shirt. Put it. Nah, man. I got to go in the book of, yeah. of Ananias. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Chapter 3, verse 4. Can't feed a baby without Forco. With, without with, without <laughs> Forco. <Yeah. laughs> I don't know. <laughs> got it? It's the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4, and verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. So it's saying that in word, um, I'm, I'm keen into this thing in word. So in word, let your word be, what does it say, what does the scripture say, with salt, seasoned with salt? Seasoned with salt, so yeah. So you can't come in there all hard with cayenne and pepper. You know, you got to be able to, to <laughs> let them see. <laughs> I know, I got all these animals. There you go. Uh now I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> cayenne pepper. Yeah, you can't come in there with cayenne <laughs> pepper, man, up there burning down the house and stuff like that. You got to let them see an example because they know who you were. Yeah. You want to give them a chance to see that you are repented, right? Yep. And then maybe most likely they're going to follow along with you. They're yeah. going to be like, you know what? Maybe, you know, shoot, he ain't gone crazy. You know? Maybe. 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 It happened with me. Happened with you? Yeah. My wife didn't think I was crazy. She didn't think you was crazy? No. Nah, well, it crazy. might have been me when I came over there. And I, you know. Because you came in with a fork and I some cayenne. I came in with a fork and some cayenne, then I dropped it on her. You know what I'm saying? And sis was like, hey, that guy. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that guy is crazy. Let's go. Let's go to this Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. We're going back to Maccabees. Don't forget about second Maccabees. Hebrews 2 and 1. Is the book of Hebrews, chapter 2 and verse 1. Yeah. Therefore, we ought to give the mer more earnest heed. The more earnest heed. Yep. Damn. <laughs> Been around and listen too long. <laughs> Mush mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Uh -huh. Lest at any time we should let them slip. Because that's what's going to happen. You might be good today, good next week. But at some point, them scriptures are going to slowly start trickling out of your left eardrum onto the floor, and you're going to be back at the club dropping it like it's hot or something. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it was you was doing before, you're going to return to that. Go back to Maccabees. 2 Maccabees chapter 7. 2 Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 20. 21. Verse 21. Yeah. 
Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language. Yeah. Filled with courageous spirits. What was this sister filled with? Filled with courageous spirits. So, sisters, if this is you and you got that brother at home that don't want to be keeping the commandments, you got to be filled with a courageous spirit. You can't be sitting up worrying about, well, he paid the bills, he paid the this and the that. You got to get filled with the courageous spirit. Got to make your next move your best move, too. This is chess, not checkers. Don't be out there doing stuff, you know, backwards. I hate you. I'm leaving you tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, you got to think ahead. Look, I'm going to give you this deadline. I'm going to start preparing myself to move on if you're not going to keep the commandments of God. Because you are not. Let me get that scripture. Go to Psalms. Go to Psalms. I don't, wanna, I don't even want to say it. Let me get the commandments. Go to Psalms. You know what I'm talking about? Show this word to Jacob. Oh, okay. 147. Give me that. 147 verse 10. Uh, 19. 19. See that? I'm terrible. Start it at, uh, let me, hold on, hold on. Let me look. Let me look. Let me, I want y'all brothers and y'all sister re to remember this. Psalm 147 verse 19. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 147 and verse 19. Yeah. He showeth his word unto Jacob. Yep. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. So his statutes and his judgments. Where do the laws of marriage come from? The Bible. So if you married to somebody that's not keeping the commandments, read that scripture again. He showeth his word unto Jacob. Yep. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Unto Israel. His law, statutes, and commandments pertaining to marriage, he showed to Israel. And then in, in, in their mind, and his brother and sister mind, they might, well, they are Israel. Let's see. Read on. He hath not dealt so with any nation. He ain't dealt with African Americans like that. He ain't dealt with Mexicans like that. He ain't dealt with Puerto Ricans like that. He only showed his laws, statutes, and commandments in consideration of marriage to the Israelites. Go to Romans. Hold that. Go to Romans chapter 9. because So you don't think I'm making this stuff up. Romans chapter 9. You are married. You might as well be married to an Edomite. Romans chapter 9, verse uh, d -d 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 4. Romans chapter 9 and verse 4. Yeah. Who are Israelites? Who are it? So this is how you know who the Israelites are. Let's see if it's just because you are from the, the, the slave, the slave trade. Let's see. Come on. To, to whom pertaineth the adoption? So does your spouse believe that the adoption pertains to them? Or do they think they Gentiles? Do they think they African Americans? When they read the 12 tribes in Revelation chapter 7, do they say, that's me? Go ahead. And the glory. And the glory. And the covenant. And the what? And the covenant. The covenants. The covenants considering marriage between Christ and the church. Do they believe that? That's how you know they're the Israelites. Come on. And the giving of the law. And the what? And the giving of the law. The laws was given only to Israel. It wasn't given to the Negro. Go ahead. And the service of God. Uh huh. And the promises. Yep. Whose are the fathers? And of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, yep. who is over all, God blessed forever. So step one, it, it pertains to the flesh, right? Step one pertains to the flesh. They might, they parents might be African-American, might be Mexican, might be Puerto Rican or Panamanian, whatever it might be. Go ahead. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect. Here it come. For they are not all Israel. They not all Israel. Just because you from the seed of Israel. Read that again. For they are not all Israel, yeah. which are of Israel. You married to a chocolate-covered Edomite. That's what you married to. You ain't really married. You ain't really married. And you saying I'm married to somebody that ain't keeping command. You really ain't married. I'm just telling you the truth. You might as well be married to a puppy. You know what I'm saying? You might as well be married to a tree. Because God said the laws concerning marriage was only given to Israel. That's it. Go back to Psalms. I ain't making this stuff up. Did I make that up? I just read the scripture. <laughs> Go ahead. Nope, didn't make it up. I ain't make it up, man. Go back to Psalms chapter 147, verse 19. Psalms chapter 147 and verse 19. See, they didn't want to hear the answer. They didn't really, they didn't ask this question expecting to hear the answer. They thought they was going to hear, uh, just hang in there. Stay strong, brother and sister. Hell no. Nah. Better get the hell out of there. You're married to the devil. <laughs> Go ahead. 
He showeth his word unto Jacob. Yeah. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He only showed his statutes and his judgments to Israel. Go back to Romans 9 where we was at. Pick up where we was at. Romans, Romans 9. chapter 9 and verse 7. Verse 6. Verse 6. Yeah. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect. Yeah. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Here it come. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Neither because they of the seed, because of the flesh. Go ahead. Are they all children? You're not his children. Go ahead. But in Isaac shall, shall thy seed be called. So you got to understand, man. Go to that. What's that? Romans 8 and 16, I think it is. Yeah, bear witness. Romans 8 and 16. Go ahead. Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. Yeah. The spirit itself. The spirit itself. The Bible. Go ahead. Beareth witness with our spirit. Yep. That we are the children of God. So if they hear the Bible and they don't say, hey, man, I'm an Israelite. They because they're not. It's because they're not. It's because they're not. They might. They mama them might be Israel. They daddy them might be Israel. They might look Israel. All oh, they got all the waves. You know what I'm saying? All the four C hair in the world. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't. They ain't Israel. Yeah. You got something, Ezra? I'm gonna say like, cause we don't know this is it, you know, who's on the, the side of this uh this thing. Yeah. This, this could be a brother this, or a sister. Yep, your side of the thing. But understand this, right? This is what you got to understand. You can't be scared, right? And you're not going to be able to take your spouse with you, right? Nope. Let's, uh, Ezekiel 14 and 14, yep. right? You're not going to be un be able to take your spouse with you because we know the commandments is a lamp. We know they're a law of life. We know they're reproof for instructions the way of life. We know that. That's Proverbs 6 and 23. But <clears throat> And uh, the commandments are only given to us, but you, you, you cannot, you ain't going to will them into it. Either they're gonna either they're gonna get on or they're gonna get left behind or, or no they're gonna, they're gonna pull get you on out or they're gonna drag you right right along with them pull so, you back so to the streets. Is the book of Ezekiel chapter fourteen and verse fourteen? Though these three men Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, all perfect in the eyes of the Lord, mm -hmm. all great men in this Bible, clearly because we're reading about them right now in twenty twenty. Read. They should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. They're only going to deliver their own souls by their righteousness. They're not going to deliver their daughter, their husband, their mama, their daddy. None of that. They're only going to deliver their own butt by doing the right thing. Let's go back to uh, 2 Maccabees one more time. Let me find the scripture right quick, though. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get it, let me get it, let me get it, let me get it. Let me get it. All right, cool. Read that thing. Second Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, mm -hmm. filled with courageous spirits, and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach. You see that thing? She stirred up her womanish thoughts. She said, I'm going to do the things that women have to do, but I'm going to be strong with it. Regardless of what adversity is coming against me, I'm going to stay strong. Come on. She said unto them, I cannot tell how ye came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life. Mm -hmm. Neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. That's it. That's it. So again, man, you brothers or you sisters, you got to be able to stand strong and trust the Lord. You got to really believe that the Lord is going to support you in your endeavors. You got to really believe that. Ezekiel chapter 24. Uh, let's start at verse... Let's start at verse 15. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 24 and verse 15. Yeah. Also, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, uh -huh. Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes with a stroke. Yeah. Yet neither shalt thou mourn. He said, don't mourn for him. Nor weep. Nor weep for him. Neither shall thy tears run down. So you got to understand the Lord don't give a dang about that person if they ain't keeping the commandments. He said, don't even cry for him. Let them go. What Fantasia say? If you don't want me, then don't talk to me. Go ahead and free yourself. <laughs> ah, ah, read that. Read on. Forbear to cry. Yeah, don't cry. Make no mourning for the dead. Because they dead. They're not keeping the commandments. They are dead. You're not only married to a chocolate covered Edomite. You are a necromancer. Can you look that up? Can I get necromancer? You're married to the dead. You're married to a walking 
Zombie. Necrophilia. Look that one up. Thank you. <laughs> hey man, he's a he's a astute brother over there, man. Necrophilia, sexual intercourse or attraction towards corpses. That's what you're doing. And you got to get all the way in there, man, because people they don't they don't think like they say in Dallas, Texas. They don't believe fat meat greasy. You know what I'm saying? So you got to get all the way in that thing. Some like it hot. Some like it cold. <laughs> like an ice box. Like old Omar and me. <laughs> got this ice box. <laughs> I got all the R&B tracks today in my head. I repent. Um, <laughs> anyways, necrophilia. See that? You're married to a dead person. You're not only married to a chocolate-covered Edomite, you're married to a damn walking dead body. Let's go back to Ezekiel 24. You gotta get all the way in there, man. It hurt. It hurt. It's painful. But that's how I want to see it. If my wife don't want to keep the commandments, I'm married to a dead zombie. She gone. She gone. We're gonna have a funeral. It's over. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be in all black. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 24 and verse 17. Yeah. Forbear to cry. Yeah. Make no mourning for the dead. Yeah. Bind the tire of thine head upon thee and put on thy shoes upon thy feet mm -hmm. and cover not thy lips yeah. and eat not the bread of men. Yeah. So I spake unto the people in the morning and at even my wife died. Yeah. And I did in the morning as I was commanded. He said, I ain't cry. I ain't drop no tear from her because I knew she didn't want to keep the commandments empty ways. I ain't cry for her. The scriptures tell you it was in Sirach where it tell you make, dawning as, make mourning as they are worthy. God don't love them, so why should you? Dang. Did that hurt? God don't love them. Your God don't love your spouse. They don't want to keep the commandments. He don't love them. Whoever it is, man, boy, girl, woman, a child, husband, he don't love them. They not keeping the commandments of God. Now, you have to be able to say to yourself, God don't love them. Why do I? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. <laughs> 